Welcome to 5 Minutes to Code Programming Basics with your host, Matthew C. Applegate. In this series, we are going to look at the fundamentals of computer programming and hardware. So whether you're hoping to program in Python or to code in C-sharp or to develop in Java, these short guides should help you get to grips with the basics to get started. You won't need to download or install any software, so just sit back and enjoy. In this series, we are going to be looking at input devices, output devices, sensors, memory and storage, as well as internet technologies. Today, we are going to be looking at input devices. So let's look at this in more detail. The best way to decide whether a device is an input device is to understand this simple rule. Does the device or peripheral help input data into the computer? This is simple enough when you realize that text is data, imagery is data, sound is data, almost anything can be turned into data. Therefore, things like keyboards are input devices. There are, of course, physical keyboards, probably the most common input device for the computer. A more modern version of the keyboard is the virtual or on-screen keyboard. Touchscreens are both input and output devices, the output part displays whatever the phone, tablet, or computer needs, whereas the input is usually in the form of a software or virtual keyboard, which can pop up and disappear when needed. There are other versions of these keyboards, which are now commonplace in fast food restaurants. They simply hold a picture of the item you want, and you press it to order it. They are very limited in what they do, but they do help input what is needed very easily and very quickly. Next up is the mouse. Mice help users quickly navigate around the screen, or what is referred to as the graphical user interface. They can have one, two, three, four, or more buttons. It simply depends on the use of the mouse. They often need a flat surface to operate and can be separate to the computer or built into the computer as a trackpad. There are also other types of mice for different types of work. For example, a trackball. A trackball, which is often used for computer-aided design as it allows the user finer control of the mouse. Next up, we have scanners. Scanners allow fast inputs of documents. The input from scanners can be images or text. Additionally, the scanners are capable of interpreting that data in a number of ways. First up is OCR or optical character recognition, which can convert the document scanned into digital text. This is really efficient way of converting printed texts into digital texts. Another type of scanning is OMR, or optical mark recognition. This simply scans the document and checks it for marks in specific areas of those documents. It calculates where the marks are and interprets that as the input. This is used in things like multiple choice questions and lottery tickets. In addition to images and text, there are also barcodes, QR codes and more. The different width of the black and white bars on the barcodes equate to different values. And on QR codes, the different patterns of the squares or modules equate to different numbers and text. Barcodes and QR codes allow quick and simple data input at cash registers, for delivery drivers to check package contents, and moviegoers to get more information about their film they might want to watch. Now let's look at more direct input methods. Cameras and webcams can both take images and videos and directly feed them into the computer as image data. Instead of scanning them from a document, it takes the light from the lens in and converts that into digital data. Each area or pixel is comprised of red, green, and blue values, and these can be stored digitally. Complementing this is audio. Microphones can capture analog sounds, convert them into digital sound data, and input them into a computer. This process is called analog to digital conversion, or ADC. Each second the computer takes a sample of the audio. The more samples per second, or kilobits per second, the higher quality of the audio and the larger the file. 
There are hundreds, if not thousands, of input devices, too many to cover here. But the simple rule is, does the device input data into the computer? This is just a short guide to input devices. Now you have the basics, don't hesitate to dig deeper. You can check out the other programming basics videos here and they will help you get started. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and comment below if you found it useful. Until next time, thanks for watching 5 Minutes to Code.